All right, my last couple of videos, they were well received by the people who actually watched them. But I need a hit. I need some views. Knock it off with the obscure crap. Here's one on Indiana Jones. All right, I, uh... Featured this guy in an earlier video where I showed off my entire Indiana Jones vintage collection, but I think he deserves his own video. This is the 1984 LJN Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom action figure. Apparently Kenner did not sell too many Indiana Jones figures for Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I guess they passed on making Temple of Doom stuff. But LJN picked it up before they started making bad video games for Nintendo. Uh, and this is after they did these guys right here. This is Dungeons and Dragons figures, advanced Dungeons and Dragons figures. And they use kind of the same construction with the arms. But he's a little bit bigger. He's a little bit taller. And this one's got the uh, rubber band on the inside. Thank God they didn't do that. Even though my oh, war duke, he, he's, he's, his joints are still stiff. Unlike this guy who's missing his head. Like that. But no, this. I got my Indiana Jones. And he's still rocking 37 years later. And managed to get this guy off eBay a few years ago. I don't think I paid more than like 15 bucks or something in a... In an auction bidding at the last two seconds and I got his hat I got his machete I don't have his bag and I don't have his whip and if you find either of those on eBay you just name your price I saw one there's only one on there now and it's like a hundred bucks and that guy can dream on I don't think anybody's gonna pay for that check out his action feature Kenner one had one too. He had like the little quick draw, quick draw action. He's not working so good these days, that one. Look like I got a million backups. Boom, boom, boom. Let me try and reposition and do this at the same time. Look, he can move his arm like that, move the other arm like that. Not that many points of articulation, but here's a likeness of his face. Not the greatest likeness of Harrison Ford, but not the worst. Not the worst. He looks more like Captain Kirk. Which... No, no, that was Ertl. Ertl did uh, Search for Spock figures. My bad. But why feature this figure again? Because... I got another one. And look, it's a variant figure. Of course. Got a dark shirt. You didn't notice. There's a light shirt. And I... You know, if I see an Indiana Jones figure anywhere... Under 20 bucks, I'm picking them up. I don't care. I keep buying the same action figures over and over again. Look, look at this. This is all my other random Harrison Ford action figures. We got Han Solo Bespins. We got Hoth Han Solos. We got more Indiana Jones figures. Like, see, I always find these ones with broken thumbs. You can always pick them up 20 bucks all day. 20 bucks all day. This one actually have his, has his thumb. I got him pretty damn cheap. Also, on eBay, been at the last second. So, I forgot what I paid. Maybe less than $20. Good deal. But, every time I pick up the same figure, it's always that warm, toasty feeling. Getting that figure for the first time. And, I did not have this when I was younger. I didn't even know it existed. I knew that the Kenner one existed because he was on clearance at uh, KB. And my sister worked at the mall, and I would have her check all the time to see if they had Indiana Jones there. And one day she found one and got one for me, and that was awesome. The only real costume detail that makes him even differentiates him from Raiders of the Lost Ark is he's got the little bandage around his hand. But they had him with the coat instead of most of the movie he didn't have the coat on. Get a better look. Look at him from behind. The front. So he's a little bit tall. He's maybe, what, four and a half inches tall? 
compared to a three and three quarter inch figure. So he's not really blended in with your other action figures at the time. I actually also, besides not knowing these figures even existed till later in my life, uh, I didn't know there was a variant. Even after I got him, and I, I went shopping, hit up my, my vintage shops, said, oh, I brought that, I was like, I brought him home, stuck him on the shelf next to him, I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, he's got two different color shirts. The awesome, you know, I'm down with the variants. Check out my Batman video, Toy Biz one, where I had, you know, I'm out collecting every single different kind of head and paint variant I can find. I like positioning his hat up a little bit like that, cocked off to the side, you know. That's where he's, he's, you know, flirting with uh, Willie Scott there. That's that's the look right there. There, when you put his hat down low, that means he's in business. About to whoop some Nazis and some thuggy guards. Here's a question I'm asking to anybody who's watching this video. Like, how did I not know of this figure? Would they have, were they hard to find back in the day? Because, I don't know, maybe it was like a Remco figure where it was, it was only at like Kmart's or something like that. Or you can only get them at Woolworth's and stuff like that. It wasn't like at every Toys R Us. It wasn't at every KB toy store, so... But LJN, I, you know, the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons figures I got. I got that, and they were pretty abundant and everywhere. I don't remember seeing them in, you know, Sears catalogs. I don't remember any ads in comic books. No commercials for them on TV. So, what was the deal with that? I always got a great comment section. You guys always fill in the blank, so go to it. I remember when Temple of Doom came out in the theater, uh, the line was around the movie theater. And they don't have that now. You don't have big lines like that. They, now they show like movies, 20 showings in a day. But back then, there was like the one theater only had four screens. You had to get Indiana Jones in the other theater. Probably had like Beverly Hills Cop or something like that, so... You had to wait weeks in order to get into see a movie, but I was dying to go see it, and then my sister's friend saw it, and she said, oh, there's like eyeballs and stuff in there, soup, and they're eating monkey brains and stuff. I was like, I don't know. Seven-year-old me was too scared to even see that. After the face melt and stuff from Raiders of the Lost Ark, I didn't think I could handle it, so I didn't get to see it then. Then I got to see it on VHS. The video store, it was one of the first movies I ever rented. First movie I ever rented was Rambo 2, and then WrestleMania, and then Temple of Doom. So, I got to see it in like 1985, probably summertime. So, I was easily able to handle like the eyeballs and even, Oh, Mom, she buy! Oh, Mom, she buy! He rips a heart out, stuff like that. I was, I was able to take that, but the face melting scene. I had to cover my eyes until I was at least, like, ten. Strangely enough, same summer. Another creepy movie. Uh, Gremlins. We went to the theater to go see that as a family. And then the people at the door were telling my dad, I don't know, he might be too young for this movie. Uh, this is really scary and violent. And my dad's like, I guess we gotta go home. I was like, oh, come on. So, finally got to see that. Also one of the first movies I ever rented. Uh, got to see Gremlins. And I was able to handle that wasn't that wasn't as scary. It's only two movies that were too scary for me when I was a little kid. Actually three. There's three movies I couldn't handle when I was a little kid. It was uh Raiders of the Lost Ark. I always had to cover my eyes when the face melting scene came on. Um now that's a meme. Nobody's even like scared by that at all. Uh the second one was Poltergeist when the guy's standing there looking in the mirror and for some reason he starts ripping his face off. What's with the face is falling off? And, uh, third one, third one was Superman 3, when, um, I forgot the character's name, Robert Vaughn's sister in the movie, she gets, like, pulled into the, the big giant computer, and then she gets turned into, like, a robot monster, that was spooky looking crap, so, those were the three I couldn't handle. Everything else I was very desensitized to. I could watch, like, people getting shot all day, blood, guts, everything, but... Yeah, those those were the three that were met that like kind of messed me up. 
I was worried about doing another video featuring the same figure, but Paramount Network just about every weekend, or at least every other weekend, has an Indiana Jones marathon on, so if they can do that every weekend, uh, I can do my second Indiana Jones video three years later, alright? That's all I got. I just wanted to make a short video while I'm literally waiting for paint to dry because uh, I'm working on a Punisher custom and I sculpted him. He looked great, but my painting skills are just crap. So uh, I was hoping to make that video soon. Just keep on waiting for that one. All right, hopefully this video gets my algorithms going and all that stuff, or I might have to change this to a Star Wars Conspiracy Channel. Um, just start making stuff up and rant about it for like three months. Uh, here's one. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy is secretly trying to sell Star Wars to the Rothschilds. Boom, there we go. There's 100,000 hits.